here's the cinnamon bell. It's time again for Judy and Jimmy, who, with their friends, the Cinnamon Bear and the Crazy Quilt Dragon, are having a pretty difficult time. After Queen Melissa of Mabyland gave them an envelope containing instructions for having their broken silver star put back together again, they set out for the wishing woods, because the instructions were written in magic ink and could only be read in total darkness. In the middle of the woods, they met Snappersnick, the crooning crocodile, who lived in a big white bathtub and sang. He was very, very much interested in the magic instructions and asked if he might take a look at the envelope. Jimmy obligingly held it up for Snappersnick to see, and clack, clack went the crocodile's jaws, and the instructions were gone. A pretty kettle of kipper snacks this is, a pretty kettle. Yeah. What do you mean by chewing up Melissa's important instructions, Snappersnick? They were ever so valuable, and now we'll never know what they said, and we'll never be able to find out how our broken star can be mended. My friends, my friends, don't carry on like this. Why? A fine thing. I do believe you're the crudest crocodile I ever laid eyes on. And just wait till I lay me cinnamon paws on him. I'll teach him a thing or two. Splendid. Maybe you could teach me how to sing a low H flat, huh? I've never quite been able to swing it. Well, if you didn't have such a big nose, I'd twist it. That's what I do. Oh, dear... Do you suppose if we went back to Melissa, she'd give us some more instructions, Cinnamon Bear? I'm afraid not, Judy. She'd probably think us very careless and unworthy. Oh, come, come, my friends. Why so bleak? Don't be like that. Didn't you say you wanted to read the instructions? Of course we did, you bad, bad crocodile. But how can we read them when you've got them inside you? Didn't Melissa say those magic instructions could only be read in total darkness? Sure, that's what she said, you big, blunt-nosed bully. But even if we did find some darkness like that... We wouldn't have anything to read in it now. Aha! Did you ever stop to think that there's nothing more totally dark than the inside of a crocodile? Goodness gracious me. That's certainly total darkness, all right. But uh, you're not suggesting, my good fellow, um, that uh, one of us climb in and read them, are you? You bet he is. It's just a trick, crazy quilt. A low, deceiving, crocodilish trick. Ball to dash, my fuzzy friend. I'm simply trying to be of assistance. That's why I grabbed Melissa's instructions and downed them. But that doesn't help us any. Even if they are in a total darkness now, we can't read them. No, but I can. Don't be funny, my bathtub, Beritone. How can you read them when they're snug in your tummy? Ha-ha! <laughs> Just a bit of snappersnick service. But perhaps a little explanation is in line, huh? A little light on the subject? You're daffy. Just plain daffy. Not at all. You see, I can't read a thing with my eyes. Not a word. Mother forgot to send me to school when I was a lad. Consequently, when I want to know something that's in print, the only thing I can do is swallow it, wait till it's digested, and then I know what it says. Y you mean you just eat anything that's written, and you know what it is without looking at it? Exactly. And a voracious reader I was in my day, too. Used to digest three or four mystery stories a day. Got them from a circulating library. But finally, they took my card away because I never returned the books. Oh, my goodness. You seem to have too literary an appetite, I suppose. Well, I couldn't return them, you see. Most annoying, too. Why, I haven't read any good books in ages. Have to content myself with old newspapers and magazines. Then you can read Melissa's instructions. Absolutely. Read anything I eat. In some ways, an advantage. I eat all my singing lessons. And the music, too. Incidentally, I have quite a repertoire of songs on tap. How would you like to hear me sing On the Road to Mabyland? Hmm. Uh, if you don't mind, we'd much rather hear you read those instructions. Yes, please do, Mr. Snappersnick. How long does it take you to digest something so you could read it? Well, that depends on what it is. It took me all last summer to digest half of Anthony Crocodile. Then I, I gave it up. Little too much of a meal, but these instructions are nothing. Should be digested by now. Hurry up and read them, Snapper Snick. We've got to get going. Very well. Must close my eyes first so I can concentrate. There. Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm-hmm. My 
my, my. Tell us quick. What do they say? Most interesting. Quote, then Christopher Crocodile stared deep into Cynthia Crocodile's blue eyes and then... Oh, pardon me. Got mixed up with the short story I ate out of Crocodile Confessions this morning. Oh, quit fiddling around and read the instructions, will you? Right away. Ah, ah here we are. Quote, the wishing well is where to go to find out what you want to know. Unquote. Gee, that doesn't say how we can get the Silver Star put back together again. It just tells us to go someplace. Are you sure you read them right, Mr. Snappersnick? Positive. Right there in black and black. If you'll remember, Judy, uh, Melissa said it would take a little extra magic to fix the star. This just means we'll have to go to the wishing well uh, for further instruction. That's it. Uh, do you know how to get to the wishing well, Snappersnick? Mm, not exactly. I never venture very far away from my blessed bathtub. But they tell me it's in that direction. It is? Come on, everybody. Let's get started. Yes, let's. Thanks so much, Mr. Snappersnake, for reading Melissa's instructions and everything. Oh, glad to have been of some assistance. And sorry you can't stay to hear me sing a bit. Really remarkable voice, you know. May do a little opera next season. And, uh, and thanks again. Thanks again, Snappersnake. And goodbye. Yes, goodbye, goodbye Snappersnake. Oh, no. Ah, yes. Goodbye, my friends. Regret I can't walk away with you, but must practice my scales now. <laughs> Well, I guess everything has turned out for the best after all. I guess it has, all right. But my goodness, who'd have thought of reading those instructions in a crocodile's tummy? I was all ready to bust him one. It certainly was as close to total darkness as you'd be able to find anywhere. I wonder what we'll find out at the wishing well. Which wishing well do you think we're supposed to find? There must be more than one. That's why these are called the wishing woods. I fell into a lemonade wishing well once upon a time, you remember... But I didn't think to make a wish to keep my colors from running. I suppose we have to wish that the star is put back together again. Oh, that sounds logical. Gee, what's that? Sounds just like a clock. Well, what would a clock be doing here? I'm sure I don't know, but we find many strange things in the wishing woods, you know. It sounds like it came from over there. Uh, let's go around this tree and see where it comes from. My goodness. It looks like a feather duster, but it's got shoes on. Yeah, and they look just like those old shoes of Uncle Jed's up in the attic. Yeah. I know what it is. It's an ostrich. I've seen pictures of him. Ahoy, friend ostrich. My word, he's got his head stuck in the ground. Who's there? Just us, Judy and Jimmy. Paddy O'Cinnamon and yours truly, Crazy Quill. I'll be right out. What do you suppose he's doing with his head stuck in the ground that way? Maybe he can tell you, Judy. Hello, my friends, and what can I do for you today? Well, we were just wondering... About that ticking noise. Oh, that. Just my breakfast, mate. It's a lovely green alarm clock. Alarm, alarm clock? clock? Yes, indeed. Oh, it was a beauty, all right. Most refreshing. Jimmy, I remember that ostriches eat awful funny things. Don't let him see the broken star. He might take that away and eat it. Oh, pardon me, little lady. I couldn't help hearing what you said. Very keen ears, you know. You don't have to worry about my eating anything you may happen to have with you. I'm not like other ostriches. I'm delicate. That's what I am. Delicate. I'm an ostrich as knows what he likes. If you don't think I am, you're mistaken. My favorite dish is divinely delicious. It's scrambled alarm clocks and bacon. Some ostriches go in for dainties, like hot water bottles and socks. They rave about lampshades and doorknobs, but stick up their noses at clocks. I've tried everything in the cookbooks, and of all of the food I've partaken, there's nothing so yummy or good for the tummy as scrambled alarm clocks and bacon. Just follow my simplified diet for peaceful, contented insides. Alarm clocks will stifle your hunger and call you for dinner besides. You can set all the clocks that you eat for the next time you wish to awaken. And when they start clanging, you're up with a bang and it's scrambled alarm clocks and bacon. Strike me, Pink. Dear, scrambled alarm clocks and bacon. Oh, that's good. That's right. You certainly are a very unusual bird, Mr. Ostrich. Holliver's my name, little lady, and you don't have to put an handle to it. Just plain Holliver, but I will admit to the unusual without too much boasting. 
Would you mind telling us why you put your head in the ground? Not at all. Just having had my breakfast, I was indulging in a spot of meditation. He means he was thinking, Judy. Oh. And I always think's best with me head that way. Do you know which way it is to the wishing well, Oliver? Rather. Right in front of your nose it is. Where? A, a bit leftish of where I'm standing now. Do you see it? Oh, it looks just like an old tree stump. That may be, young man, but it's the wishing well for all of that. I can't... What's uh, that? A strike, me think. That's the clock telling me it's time for more scrambled alarm clocks and bacon. I hate staff to dash off like this. No end. Sorry. A cheerio. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Well, I guess it's up to us to look it over anyway. It doesn't look like a well from here now, does it? It certainly doesn't. Oh, but come on. Gee, I can't see over the top of it at all. Can you, Judy? No. And I'm standing on my tiptoes, too. I can see over it. Hmm, certainly is dark down there. Stop taking up all the room, Crazy Quilt. Now, come on, let me look. Oh, certainly. Uh, want a boost, Patio Cinnamon? No, I'll just climb up on your shoulder. Hmm, just as you like. <laughs> making it all right? Of course I'm making it all right. I... <laughs> there. Well, well. I'm not making a pun, I hope you understand. Oh, no. There must be something to show it's a wishing well. A sign or some writing? Hmm. Awfully dark down there. What do you see, Cinnamon Bear? Not a blessed thing, Jimmy. Just a minute. I, I'll lean over a little farther and... Oh, 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 oh. I'm, I'm slipping. I... Oh! oh, my goodness. He's fallen into the wishing well. Poor Cinnamon Bear. The bottom of a deep, dark wishing well is certainly a terrible place to be. And while we're on the subject of wishing wells, I wish I knew how the cinnamon bear is going to get out. But it looks like we'll have to wait till next time for that. And believe me, I'll be right here to meet you. (laughs) 